And as the attacks on Ukraine's ports continue, more weapons will begin to pour in from the United States and other allies. But what about the price tag for those weapons? It has turned out to be a big story this week in Washington. A U.S. government shutdown could happen, as we've been telling you, on October 1st. And a spokesperson for the Pentagon says getting those weapons on the ground could, because of that, become difficult. Joining us now here in New York is Andrei Dobrodetsky, who's the director of communications and media for the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America. Um, thank you for coming in. We appreciate it um, in person here in our, our New York studios. It's good Congrats. to see you. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's, um, you know, it, it, because of the timing of all of this, I know the aid is so important to the Ukraine war effort, but um, boy, it's, it's going to be tight in, in Washington. It looks like that, if anything, this could hold up and be a key sticking point in the government shutdown negotiations. What argument would you make in we favor have, of the uh, now uh, 19 months of this. Uh, we were used to this at the, at the end of 2022 when the Democrats were in charge of the House. They were trying to pass something before the end so that there was enough money in the budget this year. We also had this similar situation in the spring where it finally came down to Speaker McCarthy and President Biden speaking to each other. It's got to have to be the same thing. Uh, but we really feel that the visit of President Zelensky was very effective because of the signaling by Speaker McCarthy to say that he does not want to break out the Ukraine segment and wants to keep it in any kind of CR going forward. Yeah, the, the visit recently, which was centered around the UN General Assembly here in New York, but then in Washington. Speaking of President Zelensky, let's listen to recent comments he made on this subject, and then you can come up and add some context. Um, here he is, President Zelensky. We have a historical decision by the U.S. to jointly produce weapons and defense systems, including air defense. This is something that was an absolute fantasy until recently, but it will become a reality. We will make it a reality. Make it a reality. Yeah, absolutely. Ukraine is redefining what modern warfare is. This is probably the first time we're seeing uh, two armies stand off each other on a near peer level without any air superiority. What he was mentioning was the kind of innovation that Ukraine, Ukrainians themselves have done. Any kind of these missiles that have come from the United States, whether it's the storm shadow that's very vaunted, that had to be somehow re-engineered to be put onto a MiG. Right. So all of these things, including the, the uh, innovative waves they're using drones right now, uh, that is changing things. And that, however, needs more investment from the United States and the rest of the world. Now, uh, it may be a little inside baseball from where you sit. Inside baseball might be the wrong <laughs> reference. I don't know. But the, the article that was in the New York Times today is getting a lot of attention domestically here yeah. in the United States. And I don't know, maybe from your end, if you can add anything to what's being done to try to lobby members of Congress. But basically, they said a major sticking point is whether to add $25 billion of new assistance to Ukraine. This is in the continuing resolution. Right. So they put a number on it, specifically mm -hmm. the $25 billion, saying a clean measure might get broader support among Republicans in the House, which is what I think you were alluding to a moment ago. So um, how do you, from where you sit, see yeah. all of that playing out here domestically in the United States? Or what argument might you make to lawmakers if you're in front of them? Well, first and foremost, we know that this money isn't a blank check for Ukraine. A lot of this money comes to the United States. A lot of that is actually going towards uh, working class people, whether they're welders, metal workers. Those are the people who are actually making these munitions. At a time where a lot of these jobs really aren't available, it's uh, this uh, defense spending that's actually helping float people up. And that's not in the middle of New York. That, we're talking about Ohio, we're talking about Alabama, we're talking about far-flung areas of the country where those right. jobs are really necessary. I would say, I remember from my own experience, I spent um, a few weeks on the, in the border countries when the war first broke out in Poland, Slovakia, and Hungary reporting on the refugee crisis. Yeah. And the reaction here from people in the United States was overwhelmingly supportive at the time. Yeah. As time goes on and as the war drags on, do you feel it when you talk to Americans that they're just, they're, you know, getting tired of supporting, especially financially, this war? And if, you, and if so, do you understand that? What would you say to people who are saying, boy, I didn't think it would last this long. I don't know if There's we should keep supporting it. There's definitely a dichotomy here yeah. because we are getting that in some of the polling where people ask specifically about how much money you want to spend. But then when you ask whether you want Ukraine or Russia to win, they're all about Ukraine winning. Uh, when you hear people talk in Washington, it's one thing in terms of the people with loud mouths in Congress. Yeah. However, when it comes to, uh, we just had Ukraine's Independence Day celebrated in August 24th, the first state to put out a uh, gubernatorial proclamation, South Carolina, 
Georgia, Nebraska, all these red states are actually full of Ukraine supporters. So somewhere down the line, we figure out exactly what the support is. But when you're talking about foreign spending, and this is less than a percentage point of the U.S. GDP, when you're talking about foreign spending, it's always an easy target. It could be Ukraine. It could be Israel. It could be right. any sort of country. And until Washington figures out what their problems are, it's I don't really feel, and that, that's how I explain yeah. it to Ukrainians. I mean, it's the type of thing we're trying to do here is have the conversations on all sides of all of right. these issues. Right. And we appreciate you coming in. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.